I have always loved a Chanel inspired suit but never have got round to making one and I'm finally going to go and see the Chanel exhibition at the v and so what a perfect excuse to finally get my bum in gear and make myself that Chanel suit. For this suit I am going to be using two existing patterns. I will pop a list of materials below and this video is going to be step-by-step -step instructions so that you can make your own Chanel suit too. Small disclaimer, this is the very first time that I'm sewing either of these two patterns and I do make mistakes but I will highlight them to you early on so that you can avoid making the same mistakes as me. If you're a beginner you can definitely sew this project. The jacket might seem a bit daunting but just take your time and you can absolutely do this. The jacket took me four days to sew and the skirt took me one day to sew so just factor yourself in some more time based on that. And now without further ado let's get stuck in and make ourselves a Chanel suit. Okay, for this project you are going to need a sewing machine, 3 meters of wool or tweed material, 3 meters of a lining material, I'm using cotton, fusible interfacing, twill tape, this is optional but it does come especially handy if your main fabric has a loose weave and it's good for stabilizing the edges and adding reinforcement to areas such as shoulder seams a jacket pattern and a skirt pattern. The skirt pattern I'm using is the New Look pattern number 6106 and the jacket pattern I'm using is the Vogue V7975 and you can get these probably at your local haberdashery or if you uh, run into a bit of bother there I got mine off at Amazon. Then you will need seven meters of trim. I've got two different types of trim and I'm going to add them together to make it a bit more jazzy. A seven inch zip, some scissors for cutting out the fabric, some pins, thread to match your main material, the wool or the tweed, and thread to match the lining. Great, now we've got all our materials together, let's open up the pattern. So inside you should have a booklet of instructions plus a couple of sheets of pattern paper. Looking at the booklet of instructions, I'm planning on making option A for the skirt and if you take a look just next to it, there's a diagram of all the different pattern pieces and a list of what number pattern pieces you'll need for each particular option. So for option A, I will need the pattern pieces number one to six, but I don't need pattern pieces seven and eight. I still always cut out every pattern piece, even if I don't need some, because it barely takes up any more time and it will make life a little bit easier next time if I go to sew this pattern and I want to say, go for option B, which has seven and eight included. Now, this particular pattern goes from size 10 to size 22 and if you were just planning on using this pattern as a one-off you can simply just cut along the corresponding line for what size you want to make however I always cut the pattern piece out at the largest possible size and then fold the pattern pieces to the size line that I want to make this time and that's just a bit of future proofing so that if I ever change size or that if I want to make this suit for a friend who is a different size to me then I don't have to go out and buy a second pattern I can then just fold the pattern lines over to the new corresponding size. Some pieces like this yoke back are pretty straightforward to fold others include some more tucking and pleating of the paper like so and others which have a curve require you to cut towards your line in order to fold it. With the skirt pattern all cut out, it's time to do exactly the same with the jacket pattern. I'm gonna make jacket option C. Again, I've cut out every single pattern piece, but for option C, I don't need pattern pieces number seven, 10 and 12. However, on my Pinterest deep dive into Chanel jackets, loads of them have double pockets, so I'm adding pattern piece number seven back into the mix so that the jacket has both the welt pocket and the patch pocket. 
Unlike the skirt pattern pieces, the jacket pattern pieces has the option to make both the sleeves and the main body of the jackets shorter by simply folding this bottom line to match this top line here, which is what I've done because I've got quite short arms and short body. Great, all of the pattern pieces for both the skirt and the jacket are all cut out all folded to the correct size that I want them to. And we're gonna start by making the jacket first because the jacket is definitely harder to make than the skirt. So I always start with the hardest thing first while I have the most momentum and energy. Here the instructions are showing us that for jacket C, this is how they recommend laying out the pattern pieces on your folded material. And they're giving you several options there depending on how long your fabric is. And just below that is how they recommend you lay out your pattern pieces on the interfacing. And then at the very bottom, you can also see how they recommend you lay the pattern pieces out on the lining material. It's really important to know that not all of the pattern pieces are being cut out in the main fabric and not all of the pattern pieces are being cut out in the lining. Next to the section title, it will tell you which pieces that you need to cut out for the lining. So for this lining, all you need is pieces two, four, five, six, and nine. Don't worry if you can't exactly replicate how they suggested you lay your pattern pieces out to be cut, especially because we're gonna be cutting out two patterns at the same time. We'll be able to mix and match where things go. The most important thing is that any pattern piece that has the arrow and the word fold on one of the edges, make sure that they are pinned to the folded edge of your fabric. When they're all pinned in place, time to cut them out. As you are cutting your pattern pieces out, you'll notice there are these triangle symbols on the lines and what you need to do is you need to cut a mirror triangle out of the fabric as you go along because these are going to act as markers to help you sew the right sides together. The skirt pattern doesn't require a lining, however because my main wool fabric is a little itchy, I want to line it to make it nicer to wear. I need to cut out four of pattern piece number six, so I'm changing this to cut out two from the lining material and two from the main material and that's the same with pattern piece number five I need to cut out two so I'm changing this to cut one out from the lining and one out from the main material I didn't think of this at the time but when you are cutting out pattern piece number one which is the front of the skirt make sure that you carry on the waist and the sidelines so that you don't cut out an unnecessary pocket shape in the lining also because the wool fabric can be quite bulky I thought it would be a great idea to cut the pocket pattern pieces out of the lining material instead of the wool. What I didn't think of is that you would see part of pattern piece 3 once you've assembled the garment. So don't cut pattern piece 3 out of the lining like I have. Make sure you cut this out of the main wool material. So just to clarify, for the lining of the skirt, cut out these following pieces. One, two, four, five, and six. When cutting out the skirt front and back, so pieces number one and four, you don't need to worry about the triangles on the bottom of both pieces, as these are only applicable if you're making skirt option B, and as we're making skirt option A, we can just ignore these. With all the lining cut out, next we're going to cut out the feasible interfacing, which is just pattern pieces five and six from the skirt, and pieces one, eight, and 11 from the jacket. Then we do exactly the same process with cutting out the main material. Most pattern pieces we just need to cut two, apart from the jacket pattern piece one, which we need to cut four of. Now don't get disheartened if cutting out the paper pattern, pinning it on the fabric, cutting out the fabric pattern pieces takes a while. It is a simple but long process, so don't lose faith. And actually, with the main wool or tweed fabric, it's a good idea to let that rest and settle overnight, and that will help reduce the chances of it distorting as you sew. So I leave the day there with cutting and come back fresh in the morning to start sewing it together. With everything all cut out, I'm now setting all of these skirt pieces to one side and I'm gonna start making the jacket because it's definitely the more complicated pattern of the two. First things first, you wanna grab all of the fusible interfacing pieces. So the pattern pieces one, eight and 11. And you're gonna place both of the wrong sides together. So if we're looking at piece 11 here, this first rectangle is showing the wrong side of my fabric, which hopefully you can see looks lighter than the second rectangle, which is showing the right side of my fabric. And then if I bring the two interfacings up to the camera here, you can see that one is shiny and one is matte. The shiny side is the wrong side because that's the side that has the glue on it. So you want to put this shiny side together with the light rectangle like so. 
Now, give that a good press with the iron turned up hot, and as you can see, now the two are stuck together. Repeat this process with both pieces one and eight, trimming the corners a little as you go. Put all of those pieces you've just interfaced to one side and grab the two remaining pattern piece number one. Because the weave of my fabric is loose, it's really important to edge every pattern piece to stop it fraying out of control. You can sew twill tape to the edges, which will help to reinforce all of the seams. So double bonus if you want to do that. Or you can simply go over the edges with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. After you've edged the pattern pieces, stay stitch from the top shoulder to the waistline. To stay stitch, simply sew using a straight stitch and sew a line half an inch away from the edge, which if you're looking at my machine plate here is the guideline just before five eighths. Stay stitching helps to reduce the pieces from distorting as you sew them, so definitely don't skip this step. Now that the edging and stay stitching is done for pattern piece number one, grab the two pattern piece number two. There is no stay stitching required for piece number two, so go ahead and edge those. Once they're edged, you can then match the markers on pattern piece number two with the markers on pattern piece number one, like so. Pin these together and then taking a different coloured thread, base stitch these together. Once these are base stitched, and the pins removed, you can then sew these two pieces together on the machine, sewing five eighths of an inch away from the edge. With the seam done, remove your basting line, and then, this is a super important step, press your seams flat with an iron. I am not fond of ironing at all, but just trust that it will make your garments look so much better and more professional if you take the time to iron all of your seams as you sew. With the front pieces sewn together, it's now time to look at the pockets. Now, option C comes with these fake welt pockets. I didn't realise they were fake to begin with, only when I was sewing it together did I realise that it was a fake pocket and I wasn't too impressed, but uh, hey, there we are, we're adding in an additional patch pocket anyway, so at least I'll have one set of functional pockets on the jacket. On the patterned paper, there are markings for where the welt pocket should be placed, which is pretty high up for option C, but if you look just below it, there is an additional option to place the welt pocket lower for one of the different options. So I'm going to use the lower markings to help me place the welt pocket, and then I'll add the patch pocket on top of that. So preparing the welt pocket first, simply fold it in half so that the interfacing is on the outside and sew down the two short lengths, and then turn it inside out, voila. For the patch pocket, fold on the top fold line indicated on the paper pattern and stitch that down flat. Then turn up and stitch a quarter inch seam around the rest of the U so that the back of the patch pocket looks like this. Cut yourself some trim long enough to cover the full width of the pocket and with enough to tuck around both ends. Then machine sew the trim to the patch pocket. Pocket's ready to go. Now using the markings on the paper pattern, transfer markers onto the jacket front, which will help me place the pockets. Take the fake welt pocket and place it upside down with the raw edge facing upwards, lining it up with the marker and then machine stitch a straight line across. Then press the welt upwards and stitch the small edges down. Now the instructions say to stitch along all three of the remaining edges. However, I'm just stitching along the two shorter edges and leaving the top long edge unstitched as I feel like this would make it appear more like a real pocket. If I had more time I'd probably try and figure out how to make this welt pocket real but I don't so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. Then placing my patch pocket above again machine stitch around the outside to keep that in place. There we are that is both front panels done apart from a tiny bit of hand sewing to do on the ends of the trim where I couldn't get the machine to go over them. Okay, put those two finished front panels to the side, we're going to come back to them later and get out pattern pieces three and four. Edge all of the pieces and also stay stitch piece three from the shoulders to the waistline again. Once that is all done, match up the markers on pieces three and four, pin together, base stitch 
and machine sew both sides. Remove the base stitch and press the seams flat. Now we're going to look at the shoulders. To help keep the shoulder shape, I'm going to sew twill tape to the edges. This is not a step included in the pattern instructions, however it will really help to stop the pattern distorting, so I think it's a really important step to include. Machine sew the twill tape to the shoulder edges of both the front and back sections of the jacket. Once that's done, then place the right side of the jacket back with the right side of the jacket front, matching up the shoulder edges on both, then pin together, base stitch together, machine sew, remove your base stitching and press. Line up your side seams next, and you guessed it, pin together, base stitch together, machine sew, remove your base stitching and press. Now at this point, you will have something that's starting to resemble a jacket. So pop it on, give a little spin in front of the mirror and feel justified with your progress. After you've finished basking in your own glory, now it's time to tackle these sleeves. So grab yourself pattern pieces five and six. And if you haven't guessed by now, make sure you've edged all of those pieces. Now about a third of the way down, there is a circle symbol. And then a third of the way to the bottom edge, there is another circle symbol and these are for helping you add in an ease line so mark up those two circles by using a contrasting thread and then you're going to stitch a loose line of straight stitching between those two circular points this line of ease stitching can then be pulled to help the seam sit correctly now that you've added your ease stitching match the edge of pieces five and six together on the side which has the double triangle markers like so pin the edges together and if you need to at this point you can pull on the ease stitching to help it fit then base stitch machine stitch and pick your base stitching press and then repeat for the remaining seam on your sleeve now that you have a whole sleeve on the top part of the sleeve we're going to ease stitch approximately half an inch from the edge around the circumference of the top starting at the lowest point which would be under the armpit and working all the way back around again you might not have noticed the ease stitching was much help near the elbow however the ease stitching for setting the top of the sleeve is really super helpful so definitely don't skip this step now to set the sleeve turn it around the right way and place it inside the jacket so that the right side of the sleeve is touching the right side of the jacket and then from the armhole of the jacket start pinning the sleeve into the armhole using those triangle markers on both the armhole and the sleeve to line it up in the right places once you've pinned the majority of the sleeve using the markers, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of excess to try and fit in smoothly, and this is where your ease stitching comes in. So now if you pull on the tiles of the ease at the bottom, it will ruche the sleeve evenly, so you can then start pinning it in place. This can be quite fiddly, so just take your time, and once you're happy with the pinning, base stitch it in place, then machine sew, and pick the base stitches, and this time, instead of pressing your seams flat, and apart, press both edges of the seam allowance towards the body of the jacket and away from the sleeves. <laughs> With both of the sleeves sewn in, it is a perfect time for another quick try on. I mean, just look at that giddy smile. <laughs> Another reason for trying it on at this point is you can check the length of the sleeves. So the pattern recommends turning up the hem of the sleeves up by one and a half inches. However, everybody is different and this is an easy thing to adapt. All you need to do is turn your jacket inside out, pop it on your body and then turn the sleeve up to the perfect length for your particular body. Pop a couple of pins to keep it in place, take the jacket off and then you're going to want to hand sew this hem in place. With the outside of the jacket all sewn together, now it's time to tackle the lining <laughs> uh, we are pretty much going to do it exactly in the same order as we did the outside of the jacket so first off you're going to want to grab your two remaining sections of pattern piece number one and stay stitch again from the shoulder to the waist edge pattern piece two then pin the edge of pattern piece one and pattern piece two together you'll need to leave a three inch gap that is not sewn at the bottom edge of both seams base stitch the rest, machine sew, remove your base stitching and press the seam flat. With the two front panels sorted we're moving on to the back next so you need pattern piece number nine. Again making sure that it's edged. Now with this piece we'll be adding in a pleat into the centre which will help create some movement in the lining as you wear it. 
In order to create this pleat, there are several dots in which to sew between with contrasting thread. The dot at the top, you sew from the dot up to the edge. The next two dots, you'll need to sew between them, and the final dot, you'll sew from that dot to the bottom edge, like so. Then machine sew those three lines, removing the basting thread, and then press the pleat to one side. Quickly machine sew the top and bottom of that pleat in place so it doesn't move. Then grab yourself pattern piece number eight. Line up the edge with the newly pleated back, pin, basting stitch, machine sew, remove the basting and press the seam away from pattern piece eight. Now stay stitch from the top of the shoulder to the waist. Once that's done, grab pattern piece four, give it a quick edge, then line up the edges with the back, pin, base stitch, machine sew, remove basting and press your seam. Again, time to add the front sections and back sections together. So grab your front section of the top, place it on the back, pin, baste, machine sew, remove basting and press seams for both the shoulder seams and the side seams. Now I got excited at this point and thought I knew what I was doing and didn't read the pattern and made the sleeve next. If you want to stick to the original instructions, don't make the lining sleeve yet. Move straight on to sewing the lining into the main jacket and set the sleeve in later. As you will see, the way that I went about it does still work, but I think the original instructions might get the sleeve to sit a little flatter than what I managed. Anywho, <laughs> back to the jacket. Grab your sleeve pattern pieces. We're going to follow the exact same process as the main sleeves. Edge them, match up the edges, pin, baste, machine sew, remove basting, press seams for both. Ease stitch around the circumference, set into the body, pin around the armhole, adjust with the ease, pin some more, basting stitch around that, machine sew, remove the basting and press the seam towards the body. Now we're going to sew the lining into the main jacket. Make sure that the main jacket is turned around the right way and the lining is turned around the wrong way. Pin the lining to the jacket, matching the notches all the way up both sides and around the neckline. Again, basting stitch, machine sew and remove the basting. The instructions at this point I don't think made this very obvious so I did this wrong but what you also need to do is sew along the bottom one and a half inches from the edge and then trim the facing. Trim the seam allowance and cut notches into the curve to get the seams to sit flat when we turn it inside out. Then it's time to give it all a good press and this time we're pressing both sides of the seam allowance towards the white interfacing. Then you want to understitch all the way around to the front and the neckline as much as possible. I say as much as possible because it gets really tricky to under sew when you get to the angle where the front meets the neckline. When you get to that point just stop, leave a gap and start again further along where it does become possible to sew again. Understitching is where you run a line of straight stitching very close to the seam line which stops the lining from rolling forwards to the outside of your garment. To help with this also press the seam afterwards making sure that the stitch line is ever so slightly rolled towards the inside of the jacket towards the lining. With the two now stitched together and the jacket turned the right way, pop the lining sleeves through the armhole of the main jacket and I'm just going to add some tacks in the shoulder between the lining and the main fabric to keep that all secure and squared away. Looking at the bottom hem of the jacket, turn up the hem of the main material by one and a half inches, pin in place and then I find it really helpful to give that a quick steam before stitching it down and we're going to hand stitch this in place. Once this done we're going to look at the bottom of the lining hem and you're going to turn this up just half an inch. Pin and iron this flat then you're going to lay the hem of the lining on top of the raw edge of the outer hem then pin and hand sew this in place. This might seem a bit odd because it makes the lining baggy but this is on purpose because it creates a little pleat at the bottom of the lining again to add ease and movement into the jacket while you're wearing it. With the bottom hem finished that just leaves the sleeve lining hem to do so turn your sleeve inside out and turn the lining edge up half an inch and again lay that on top of the other sleeve hem and hand sew it in place. There we are, we have a whole jacket done. The only thing left to do is to add all of the trim which you are going to have to do by hand and it goes all the way around the outside edges of the jacket and around the edge of the sleeve. However, I am running very short of time. I've got just about a whole day left to make the skirt so I'm going to leave the trim and hope I get time to add it in. But if I don't, I still have a full jacket. Just sans the trim. Anyway, 
onto the skirt. Grab your skirt pattern pieces and your zip from wherever you've been keeping them in the meantime and we're going to start off by making the front of the skirt with the pockets. So you will need pattern pieces number one, two and three. As always, make sure each of these pattern pieces are edged. Then taking pattern piece one, lay it right side up on the table and you're going to line up the edges of the pocket with pattern piece number two. Pin it in place, base stitch, machine sew those all together like so. You are going to need to cut a couple of notches into the curves to help it lay flat when we flip it around. Turn pattern piece one to lie right side down and flip pattern piece two over the top. Then we'll need to press the seam down flat and understitch over the top of the seam so that the green lining doesn't roll over the top of the pockets. Once that is done, grab yourself pattern piece number three and line it up with the seams on pattern piece number two. And you're going to pin, basting stitch, machine sew around that long curve there. With that sewn, you're now going to sew the top and side of all three pattern pieces together. Now that I've sewn them all together, I just realized my mistake of cutting out pattern piece three in the lining. So uh, here you go. Change that to my main fabric, which looks a load better. Pop the front to one side, and we're going to start looking at the back of the skirt. So you will need pattern piece number four. So these two back sections need a dart in both of them, and you can see the markings for the dart here. Transfer those markings over to the fabric using a contrasting thread, and then you're going to pop those two top dots together, and then sew between the top dot and the bottom dot in a triangular shape. With your dart sewn in, grab your front panel again, and place that right side up on the table, then lay the two back pieces right side to right side on top of the front pattern piece. And you're going to sew down the side seams. So again, pin those in place, basting stitch, machine sew, and press those seams nice and flat. Once you've done that, you're going to sew the back seam together, but not the whole way. You're going to go from the bottom of the skirt and only up to the triangle marker. So don't go any further because we need that gap to fit the zip in. Pop the skirt to one side for a minute and we're going to look at the lining. And here is the moment that I realised that I didn't need to cut out the pockets into the lining. Whoopsie. Take pattern pieces one and four for the lining and again make sure that they're edged again use the pleat markers from the pattern to add in the pleats to both of pattern piece four and then again you're going to line up the side seams for pattern piece one and pattern piece four using those markers down the side pin basting stitch sew and press Place both the wrong side of the main skirt and the wrong side of the lining together, matching up the markers on the top of the skirt and sew that in place. Once the lining and the main skirt are sewn together, you can then sew the back seam of the lining, again from the bottom of the skirt only up to the triangle marker, leaving room for the zip. With the outer skirt and the lining all together, pop that to one side and grab yourself pattern pieces five and six. Iron the interfacing onto the wrong side of the pattern pieces five and six. Then line up the edges, pin basting stitch, machine sew, remove your basting stitch and press those nice and flat. Now pin the sewn yoke to the top of the skirt and because we're making this a Chanel suit, I'm adding in more trim. So I'm pinning this trim into the seam and adding the yoke on top. Once you've got all three layers together, basting stitch, machine sew, remove that basting stitch. But this time you are going to press the seam allowance upwards towards the yoke and away from the skirt. Now it's time to add the yoke facing. So grab your remaining pieces of pattern piece five and six out of the lining material, edge and sew these together. Match the straight top of the yoke lining to the straight top of the main yoke and you're going to pin, base stitch, machine sew along the outside there. Making sure however that you leave a two inch unsewn gap either end to help you fit the zip I didn't think of this at the time, which is why I'm telling you to do that now. So when I got to putting the zip in, I then had to unpick my yoke lining to get that to fit. So make sure you leave yourself a space. Then flip the yoke facing over to the inside and understitch all the way along the top to make sure that the lining doesn't wiggle up and become visible. Again, making sure that you've left yourself that two inch gap either side to help you fit the zip. Fold the edge of the yoke 
in to create a hem and pin it over the top of the other seam allowance, casing it inside. Now the instructions say to machine sew this in place and I did attempt this to begin with, however I thought it looked really messy so I unpicked that and decided that I would hand sew it in place as I think it looks a lot neater and more beautiful. Now it's time to tackle the dreaded zip. Different people have different ways of setting a zip and this is probably just one of many. How I set the zip is I line it up flat against the edge of the skirt and then I fold it over and understitch it in place. Do that for both sides and once the zip is understitched in place I can then take my lining and just as we've done with encasing the seam with the yoke lining we can encase the edge of the zip like so and again I prefer to hand sew this in place as it's a lot neater um, and I'd rather not add another visible machine sewing line. Now all we need to do is hem the skirt. So turn up the hem one and a half inches, pin basting stitch and machine sew that in place. And because this is a Chanel suit, I'm adding in some more trim to the bottom of the skirt as I hem it. Then you're gonna turn up the lining hem by one and a half inches. And again, I've hand sewn this in place encasing all of the edges of all of the trim and the other hem. Give everything a final press, making sure it's all crisp and beautiful, and voila, you have a whole Chanel suit. Whew, that was some intense sewing, but I have a whole suit ready to go and wear to see Chanel. What do you think? Uh, here is me wearing it at Chanel, this is me outside the exhibition and then posing with all of Chanel's own suits. I felt absolutely fabulous wearing this suit and it was super comfy to wear so I imagine I'm going to get loads of use out of it. It's a shame that I ran out of time and couldn't get to add in all the trim of the jacket so I might go back and add that in later. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I add more trim or should I leave it as it is? There we are. Well, I hope this inspires you to get your sewing machine out and make your very own Chanel suit. I plan on doing these videos semi-regularly, so if there is a pattern you've been thinking of trying out and you want me to test it out for you, let me know, send me a comment below. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week, keep being fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye!